All right, welcome back. We are on our third uh, pen cast for week eight, and in this we're going to pull just a, a small topic from section 2.6, but it's actually going to form um, a, a, a significant part of the, the remainder of our experience in chapter two, and is going to significantly inform our, uh, our proof set three which is going to be discussions of sets of equations of plane motions. So in this case, we're going to start off with some sort of mapping. And we're just given some equations. x prime equals root 2 over 2 times x plus root 2 over 2 times y plus 1. And y prime equals minus root 2 over 2 times x plus root 2 over 2 times y plus 3. Okay, so first of all, uh, is this a plane motion? Well, <clears throat> in fact it is, uh, because we can identify our numbers here, A, B, C, and D. Our A is root 2 over 2. Our B is root 2 over 2. Our C is 1, and our D is 3. Now, since a squared plus b squared equals 1, because root squared to 2 over 2, when you square that, is 1 half. So, a squared plus b squared equals 1. Uh, theorem 2.3 says that this must be a plane motion. So, it's going to be one of those four. It's going to be either a translation, or a rotation, or a reflection, or a gr glide reflection. And uh, I mentioned uh, when we were discussing uh, equations of motion, the fun part, the interesting part about starting off with a system of, e of equations like this, uh, once you know that it's a plane mapping, a plane motion, uh, to figure out what kind it is, is uh, really one of the more interesting questions you can ask. And we're going to tackle that by discussing uh, the notion of invariant points. So the, the idea is what points, if any, and this is certainly going to be uh, a key condition, uh, which, what points, if any, are mapped to themselves under the mapping. So our mapping is given, you know, we get our new x, x prime, and our new y, y prime, by applying this function to x and y. And, <clears throat> but if a point x comma y is mapped to itself then x itself is equal to the square root of 2 over 2 times x plus the square root of 2 over 2 times y plus 1 and y itself is equal to minus root 2 over 2 times x plus root 2 over 2 times y plus 3 and so now what we have uh, is a perfectly good linear system um, involving just the variables x and y so to put this in standard form, so we can apply all that wonderful machinery that we learned in linear algebra, we're going to uh, move all of the <clears throat> x and y terms to the left and leave the constant terms on the right. And so we end up with 1 minus root 2 over 2 times x minus root 2 over 2 times y equals 1 and root 2 over 2x plus the quantity 1 minus root 2 over 2 times y equals 3. <clears throat> now, uh, it may not seem like that that got us very far, because we certainly have made all of our terms more elaborate and more complicated. But uh, the great thing about linear algebra was that it gave us, uh, it allowed us to put things in terms that uh, make it easy for a calculator or other sort of computer to solve for us, and that's exactly what I've done here. So we have our matrix in standard form, and then remember this tilde means uh, is row equivalent to, and what we did was we re uh, applied the row reduced echelon form to it. And what we ended up with is the identity matrix over here, which is telling us that there's exactly one solution, and then two numbers over here, which are telling us the components. This is telling us that x equals negative the quantity square root of 2 plus 1 all over square root of 2 plus 2. 
and the y coordinate of our fixed point is 2 root 2 minus 3 all over square root of 2 minus 2. Um, so there is exactly one point in the plane that is mapped to itself under this transformation and that point is this one right here. It's kind of a monster. Uh, it's not uh, It's not pretty looking. Uh, certainly if you were taking an exam and you ended up with this point uh, as your answer, um, I think your experience would probably tell you there may be something a little off about it. But in fact, this is the answer. This is correct. So let's think about our, our, uh, um, our plane motions. What kind of plane motion only has one fixed point? Could it be a translation? Well, now remember, the translations take everything, every point, and displace them by the same vector. So unless that vector is the zero vector, that translation is going to have no fixed points. If it is the zero vector, then everything's going to be a fixed point. And so, no, it can't be a translation. This I would either have zero or all fixed points. Ah, I keep saying fixed, and I should be saying invariant points. Okay, now how about a rotation? So, uh, there is a point, and we rotate all, every, any point in the plane around that point. Now, uh, if we were to apply the mapping to that point itself, um, since it has zero distance away from the center of the rotation, it's act not actually going to move. Uh, so yeah, it could be a rotation. And if that's the case, um, then the point that we found, that invariant point, would be the center of the rotation. Okay, so uh, that's some really interesting information. Um, if we can rule out a reflection or a glide reflection, then um, we have definitively figured out that it is a rotation, and we've found something very important about that rotation. So how about reflection? Could it be a reflection? Now, uh, keep in mind that reflections, if you have a point that is being reflected over a line, we sort of draw uh, a line that is perpendicular to the mirror um, to our point and then we construct a mirror image of that line and the image is over here. Um, so if you start on that line then there is nowhere for you to go. So if you're looking at a reflection then everything along that line that dis that defines our mirror is actually not going to move. Um, so it can't be a reflection because a reflection must have infinitely many invariant points. Okay, so our uh, system of equa system of equations uh, that we're discussing up here can't be a reflection. Now, a glide reflection, remember, is a reflection that is followed by a translation um, in a direction that is parallel to the uh, to the mirror. Uh, <clears throat> and so, if we look at the fixed points of that reflection, um, we would have this whole line right here, uh, but as soon as we translated that in a direction perpendicular, direction parallel to that, all of a sudden we have, we have moved every point on that line to a different point on that line. Uh, so a glide reflection could not be our, uh, our motion here because glide reflections would have no invariant points. Okay, so it can't be a translation, it can't be a reflection, it can't be a glide reflection, it must be 
a rotation. And that invariant point that we found must be the center of that rotation. Uh, now, we could go a little bit further and figure out the angle of that rotation, but uh, I'm going to leave that as a teaser for a later exercise.